Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here, and uh, it's Tuesday night. We're gonna create smart. It's gonna be awesome. Um, I, I can see Robert G's already in here saying, "Hey Jeremy, hey, hey Robert, how's it going?" Um, so, uh, what are we working on tonight? Well, I've got a doggo for you. Um, we did uh, Lorraine's cats the other day, and uh, you know, like she she had sent a picture of her dog along with her cats and. And like I said in that video, it's been forever since, um, you know, I, I, I finally got to these things. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm like, it's long overdue. I'm going to do a dog as well. Uh, unfortunately, it's a beautiful dog. I do have a reference picture here. Um, it's super cute. Uh, just chilling on the uh, couch, uh, eating a, uh, like a little tennis ball. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully I have the right colors to do like the tennis ball and everything like that. I don't really know, but I'm going to give it a shot and, um, I, I'm just going to jump right into it because I, I do think like with these type of pictures, it does take a while. So I might not even be able to finish it all in one session. Hey kid, how's it going? Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, so when looking at this picture, I, I started thinking like, well, what kind of paper do I want to use? What kind of medium do I want to use? Um, I do think I want to practice my pastel drawing uh, some more. So I decided to go ahead and use uh, black paper for the uh, pastel, but I'm not using the typical black paper I usually use. Um, the typical black paper I use is like a, a, a mixed media paper. Um, I, whenever I do my pastel pictures, I like to do it on watercolor paper that I tint uh, with acrylics. So that's what I've got. Um, I've got it started off with white paper, turned to black, kind of sketched out with a, a white uh, pencil, like where everything is, so I can just jump right in. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to get started. Uh, feel free to chat with me, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. All right. Thanks, guys. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to... Oh, this lazy bum's in my way. I'm going to move him. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this like, base area just to uh, get some colors down. Um, so if Lorraine does pop in, make sure you say hi to her and, you know, compliment her on her puppy. I, I think it's beautiful. I, I didn't catch the name, so I'm going to have to wait for her to tell me. But what I'm hoping to do, usually these pictures take a while. So what I'm hoping to do is just get down a bunch of different colors and then come back and worry about details later. So that's my approach here. I love working on this kind of paper because it, it, it's almost like, um, well, with this black, it's almost like a, like a chalkboard, but uh, it is this kind of sanded paper. Uh, I mentioned in past um, past uh, streams, like how I, uh, yeah, I love the sofa. The sofa is like, like I would love to have the sofa. It's a beautiful sofa. Looks like this nice little leathery thing. Um, anyway, sorry, <laughs> I got distracted there. Um, so, uh, yeah, so like um, I mentioned before, kind of how I prepare the paper. I start with watercolor paper um, and uh, I apply like some some type of uh, tone. Like in this case, it's black because it is a black couch. It's kind of a dark room. Um, I, I, I feel safe with that, even, even though it might be challenging to get the colors pulled out of the dog's fur on black. But I'm going to give it a shot. We've done enough black and uh, pictures on black uh, paper here that I feel confident that I'll be able to pull this off. But anyway, um, after after toning the paper, what's up to Larry? What's going on with Larry? Oh, just saying hi. <laughs> I thought it was his birthday or something like that. Um, after I tone the paper, I, I do apply some uh, clear gesso just to give it that kind of sanded um, uh, texture that's needed so that, you know, it's got the grit to actually hold the um the pastels so that that's a that's it in a nutshell like i said i've got other videos out there that kind of go more into depth on the process i i think it's great like um you know pastel mat is is uh not expensive but it's it's not the cheapest thing in the world it's a couple of bucks per sheet um but you know this is an inexpensive way of creating your own texture paper that you can use with uh, pastels and it, it works really great. Uh, I've done a couple of different pictures this way. I'm always happy with the process. I'm happy with the results. So I'm a fan. 
It's like we're coming back. I I have no ideas for a uh, for a script. If you guys got some script ideas, I, I'd be willing to hear them. I'm sure he'll be back eventually. I think the last one I did was like last summer. I feel like he's he's due for a comeback. I was I always enjoy making those Leroy episodes. They're they're a lot of fun. I've been meaning to, and I just haven't gotten to it. Um, I've been meaning to like make a uh, stream about you know the process there because like a lot of people watch this and, and they're into drawing and stuff. I think it'd be kind of cool to like let them know how they can bring their drawings to life. Like even this dog here, um, and I hope she comes in and lets me know what the dog's name is. I don't. I, I hate calling him dog. Or it could be a her, for all I know. But anyway, um, even this dog here can be uh, animated to uh, talk if you wanted. It's, it's a great process. So that, uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with them, um, Leroy is an animated character I made. That um, I do some videos now and then with like little uh, little bits where I try to tell really lame jokes as a redneck animated cartoon character. It's fun. You know, everybody needs a hobby. So, yes, uh, hopefully Leroy will come back soon. I, I've got no material, though. So the process here is just to kind of get your first layer down of uh, pastel, and then we'll build up from it. Um, as you can see, it's not the right color yet. It's kind of like um, a little bit darker than it should be. That's because it's on the black paper, but if you've seen any of my drawings where I work on black paper, you know, you, you eventually build these uh these colors up so that they're not so muted. I do like that contrast though of the color on black paper. And to do it in pastel and a lot of fun. So he she does have this like white streak that kind of comes down here. I don't want to lose that so I'm gonna pencil that back in. This kind of comes down here it kind of goes into the nose area which i'm not too worried about i'll just kind of outline here that's just to let me know that there is some white in that leroy having a conversation with shiloh and finn yeah that'd be kind of cool like um so there's that audio between uh shiloh and and uh Forrest finn it would it would be kind of cool if like leroy was just sitting there in the room making uh comments about it i actually like that one all right, if I steal these ideas, I'm not going to give you guys credit because I'll probably forget. <laughs> but that's a that's a great idea. Just kind of just be a fly on the wall sort of thing. That'd be kind of cool. Hey, maybe that'll uh, entice him to uh, entice Shiloh to put more audio out there. That'd be kind of cool. We've kind of stingy with that audio lately. If Shadow is watching this, which is very highly unlikely, uh, you know, we like to hear from your grandfather. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any of them watch this show. And that's okay. My own people don't watch this show sometimes. So what sucks with drawing these beautiful dogs is that there is that ugly phase and I feel bad because like the dog itself isn't ugly. It's just the drawing is for a little while. Um, what was her name? Was it Mabel? The, uh, the shop, shopping cart, um, um, uh, like a doodle. I forget her name, but yeah, yeah, she did a, uh, there was one with uh, her in it. Um, same deal. So all I did was take um, that uh, doodle from the book and, uh, hey, Ben, how's it going? Um, so all I did to uh, make, um, no, it was uh, not Mabel. It was uh, Maven, Miss Fashion Maven. That was the character. Yeah. So um, all I did was take that doodle from the book and uh, open it up in Photoshop and, you know, 
basically the process is that you've got to like cut the picture up into like movable parts to create a puppet uh, that you can then animate. And uh, that's all I did there is uh, I took his drawing and uh, applied a mouth, you know, like, um, so man, I should really do like, <laughs> that's not what I was expecting to talk about tonight. Um, but I should really do a, um, like a, a little walkthrough of how that works. Um, as far as the mouth movements, what it is, is like the audio is lip sync to um, these various different mouth forms. So like whenever you talk, um, you might say A-E-I-O-U. And as you can see, my mouth is making pretty generic um, movements. And all those different, uh, they're, they're called, uh, I think they're called phenomes, um, but they're basically the same shape for various sounds that the, the mouth makes. And all you have to do is draw those. And I forget how many of them there were. Uh, I think it was something like, I don't know, 20 to 30 or something. Don't quote me on that, though, because it, this is all from, like, memory. Um, but anyway, you just draw those different mouths. And then the program that I use uh, automatically lip syncs uh, those mouths. It chooses which mouth to show based on what sound it's hearing. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically how it works. And then, you know, you can also like animate the arms and you can animate the head. Um, it actually tracks your, uh, yeah, Maven, that's it. Um, so it actually tracks your head as your head is moving around. So your character's head's going to be moving around. Um, I really, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm convinced that I'm going to end up doing a show on this because it, it is, so this is an art show, but it is of interest to art, artsy people. Like who wouldn't want to, draw something and then bring it to life i think most of the people here that draw probably would and, and what's cool is it doesn't have to be a cartoon character that's just what i did um it can be it can be a realistic character i've seen people do like 3d um 3d models and then bring those to life uh i've seen people you know take photos and you know usually political figures and make them talk I don't know if you guys remember back, um, like when George Bush was in office, they did the uh, the bit where he would sing and and all that stuff. I, I think that was done and done with the program. Uh, the Simpsons did a live show using the same software at one point. It's kind of cool. Uh, Leroy does not have a last name. I thought about that because people kept asking, and I'm like, eh, I'm not going to give him a last name. I like to lead things up to people's imagination, so I kind of left that open. It's probably so. Leroy is a very redneck name. That's that's why I came up with Leroy. Um, I, I I tried to think of the most redneck name I could think of. Um, so he's probably got like a redneck last name too. I don't know what would be a redneck last name, but. So there is there is actually a, like a Leroy Parnell who's a race car driver. Um, I didn't I didn't mean to draw that kind of connection, but there there is a uh, there is a race car driver named Leroy Parnell. That is not what I was going for there though. Um, that whole intro where um, that whole intro where he says uh, "Hello, Internet. My name is Leroy." I just wanted something that sounded cool for that. You know, something that sounded like. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with pig calling, like that whole uh, "sui" bit. Like I can, <laughs> I'm showing my redneck roots here. Um, but anyway, so there's a thing called pig calling where people actually compete sometimes, and and it's just like what I just did, and that's what I wanted the intro to sound like. I wanted it to sound like, um, you know, almost like a pig call. Sui, 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 sui. Yeah. This is not the way I thought this conversation was going to go today. And I was just going to draw this beautiful dog and we were going to talk about dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, Maven, um, Maven was pretty easy to animate. Like um, the, the person I had to uh, do the voice for it, like they weren't even in the room. I had them record the audio separately. And um, again, the program just kind of splices, splices it together. It'll take your puppet that you make and apply uh, the mouth movement and all of that to whatever um, whatever audio you supply to it. So you can you can do it both ways. You can record the audio while you're animating the puppet, or you can um, 
you can just supply it to any random audio. You know, I should just take a picture of Shiloh and Forrest Fan and turn them into puppets and have them like actually talking uh, to that audio that, that they put out there. That would be funny. I don't know if that would be funny, but it would be fun. That's the, that's the other problem. You know, like some of the jokes are kind of lame and everything. I don't... I have a sense of humor, but I'm not a comedian. So, like, it, it's tough for me to come up with material for it that isn't just kind of, like, self-indulgent. Um, I tried to, like, pivot and take Leroy in, like, a different direction where I thought it would be kind of cool... You know, I was thinking like redneck things, things that I'm interested in. I thought it'd be kind of cool if, um, you know, because that treasure hunts over, there's no new material really to talk about. Um, I thought it would be kind of fun if I took him in the direction of like where he was just kind of like looking for things like Bigfoot, UFOs, things like that. But the more, like I made two of those episodes and, and the problem is things sound good in my head, but I have a pacing issue with these things. Like I was... um. I was uh, like recording or like writing it and recording it and all that stuff. And, and I didn't realize like, man, this just sounds like a boring infomercial. It's not funny. It's not any of that stuff. So I only did two of those episodes, maybe three. I don't know. But I wasn't into them as much. Um, the ones that I like are the little bits. Like um, last summer I did one where uh, uh, he was just talking about like how hot it was because there was a heat wave going on. And um you know, like I was out going for a walk and the place where I go for a walk is like right by a, like a, a creek. And, um, you know, it's, it's very strange that in 2023, uh, people like people used to go swimming in creeks all the time. I remember when I was a kid, I used to, um, but like, you know, as time goes by, you start realizing, well, that's kind of gross. You know, there's like diseases and stuff in those creeks. Um, so I kind of gave up on it. Um, but anyway, it's, it's weird that in 2023, I was out there going for a walk during this heat wave and sure enough, there's people out there treating it like it was a beach or something. Like there was a, like a little, um, boat ramp and they were all just out there sunbathing and swimming in the Creek and everything. I'm like, yeah, that's a Leroy episode. So uh, that was probably the last one I made. I think I, I think I made something about, you know, when I saw it outside, go jump in a Creek essentially. And that was fun. So little things like that. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's tough for me to find inspiration for it. Yeah, I could, pro I, I could probably come up with some new material. I just got kind of sidetracked, too. So, like, I, I kind of um, kind of got busy with work and stuff like that. And just, you know, I haven't revisited. One, one of these days I will. I think, um, so the, the, fun, the, the funnest one that I enjoyed doing and the one that was has been the most popular like the most views people uh like gave it so many thumbs up and stuff like that had nothing to do with any kind of treasure hunting or ufos or bigfoot or any of that stuff it was that i made an episode about uh beer and um you know the the inspiration from that was uh my dad drinks a uh, natty daddy beer and uh he keeps uh he, he would have me drink some of it and i'm like man this is the best shitty beer out there and it really is natty daddy is the best shitty beer it, it, it's shitty but it's the best shitty and um anyway so like I, I was like how do i how do i turn this into a leroy episode so i got the idea that like leroy would be at um walmart uh buying beer and uh be making a recommendation on uh what beer uh people should buy so as it turns out, apparently there's a lot of people out there who do enjoy uh, Natty Daddy, which I do. I, I like Natty Daddy. I mean, you know, it'll mess you up, but <laughs> it's pretty good beer. And uh, well, I like it. I'm not going to say it's good beer. I'm, I'm going to say it's beer and I like it anyway. Um, so he did an episode about um, that and uh, it ended up doing really well on TikTok. So the, the thing about it is like I had only put up like two, three videos on TikTok. So it's not like I had any following whatsoever. Um, nobody knew Leroy or anything like that. It's not like I cross promoted it from the the few subscribers who were on um, uh, YouTube. Like he never had a lot of subscribers either. 
it, it was just basically the forest and treasure hunt community. But anyway, so I put it up on TikTok and, <laughs> and kind of gave it a tag of a uh, natty daddy. And that, that thing blew up. It, it got like 80,000 views in like the first day that it was up and everything. And it, it kind of balanced out after that. But I thought it was amazing. Like 80,000 people watching Leroy, this animated character that I made up. I thought that was cool. Yeah. It, um, Maven should have been a recurring star. I only put her in that one time. But yeah, she, she definitely should have been like a recurring character. I think the only recurring character was never actually seen. Um, that was uh, Billy Bob, who was the guy who was doing the filming. Never bothered to draw him up, give him a backstory, anything like that. He was just basically somebody that Leroy could yell at every now and then, like, Billy Bob, stop, you know, doing whatever you're doing. I don't know. I, I can't make up material on this one. But, yeah, I think that was the only recurring character, which is kind of sad. It should have been, uh, been Maven. But that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I asked for permission and everything from uh, Forrest Fenn because he drew the character. I didn't want to just, you know, include something that he drew without his permission. Um, like, what it was, oh, now that I remember. So what it was is some lady was using his doodles on T-shirts and he, uh, he thought that was kind of cool. So he actually asked me if, um, if I would kind of like work with her and kind of like promote it right so like that episode where um maven is in it you might notice at the end of it i, I talk about this lady's t-shirts and where you can buy them and stuff and leroy's actually wearing one of the t-shirts you know it's a cartoon version of it but anyway um he's actually wearing a t-shirt that has one of the doodles on it and that's what that was about i was actually asked if i could um you know kind of help bring awareness to to her shop and everything so so that's what that was about so like i was like well i don't know how can i do that uh, and i was like oh you know what i'll have leroy interview one of the doodles because they're both doodles so it's a little meta right but that that's the joke right a cartoon is interviewing a cartoon and um and of course zoom was kind of new at the time like this is 2018. sorry i'm i'm down memory trail here but feel free to ask questions or whatever but um, anyway, this was around 2018 and Zoom was still kind of new. And of course, you know, the treasure hunt community was all like on Zoom and stuff. And, and the funny thing was that every time I would watch these things, like somebody's internet would drop and they would get kind of stuck. Like, I don't know, it's probably happened on my show as well, where they get stuck in these awkward, like, fate, like you know, something like that. And, and it was just like freeze frame. And um, anyway, I thought it was kind of funny. So I worked that in as well. But I had to make it look like a Zoom call, um, but of course it couldn't be Zoom, so like he crossed out Zoom and put in like Leroy, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. Those were those were the fun times. Like, I, I really enjoyed making Leroy back then. Um, just as a, like, a redneck animated character and stuff, I don't know, there's probably like a few dozen of those out there in the world, so like, I don't know if he's any better than those, but... For, for the treasure hunt community, though, it was a lot of fun. Like, and I didn't tell anybody that um, that was my character. So that was kind of fun, too. Like, people were wondering, like, what is this thing even about? <laughs> like, why is this animated guy on YouTube talking about the treasure hunt? And I was like, oh, it's just me having fun, you know? But I, I'm really glad that you guys uh, enjoyed it, you know? Uh, that, that brings me a lot of joy. Like, it was fun making it, but it was more fun um, watching people enjoy it. The, the thing is that it's not completely made up, you know, like, um, I don't know. I, I feel like I put my redneck roots behind me, but, uh, yeah, most of my family is from down south. Uh, a lot of them live in, like, South Carolina. Um, I live in Kentucky. Um, you know, I've got, the, I've got that redneck cred. Uh, most of my life was... Uh, growing up around um you know country people and the country people are you know i make fun of them and stuff like that for fun uh but really they're they're some of the best people in the world you know um country people are more not, uh, more likely to be nice to you and um you know forgiving and um i don't know like all all, all the nice things 
they're not always like that, you know. Like if you uh, if you piss one off, they'll let you know. But but yeah, country people are good people. I think what most people don't realize is like I don't know. There's a lot of us out there, you know. Like I I kind of identify as a country country person. I don't put on airs. I don't you know try to be something better than I am or anything like that. It's like what you see is what you get. And I feel like a lot of people are like that, whether they still live in the South or whether they're just from the South. You know, don't get me wrong. The South is known for some bad things as well. But um, the people are nice. Or the people can be nice. I, I shouldn't generalize. If you're from the South, you're good people. There you go. Because they can, it's country people. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Okay, Larry. I appreciate it. Anyway, so that that's that's the story behind Leroy. Um, I was kind of bored with the treasure hunt. I wasn't making any progress, but I still wanted to participate. I wanted to have some fun and everything. That that's where it came from. And then a lot of it is like, you know, just kind of having fun with, you know, some of the things I saw. So like, you know, there was a there was that guy. Um, uh, I forget his name. Uh, I don't have any problem with the guy, but, um, you know, like you really shouldn't be digging your a hole to China to look for that thing. And, um, I, I'm sure he is aware that that was unusual. Uh, but anyway, so like, um, I made an episode talking about like, you know, you need a backhoe to find that thing. And that's not po poking fun at anybody in particular. It's just poking fun at some of the things that we got up to, you know? Like everybody, everybody out there was super confident that they knew where it was. And um, of course, Leroy would have to be as well, you know, perhaps a little overconfident. Leroy was a little overconfident, but he would never admit to that. In, in his mind, he knew exactly where that thing was. It was only a matter of time before he could go and get it. I think we can all see ourselves in Leroy. I, I certainly can. Ooh, soldier, uh, um, shoulder surgery. Hope that went well. Yeah, that sounds painful. Shoulders and backs. Those seem to be the first things to go. Especially if I do a lot of labor. I think I'm getting the colors right. Like, it's going to take a lot of development here to get them perfect, but... You don't mind. We got allergies this week. It feels like uh, spring as far as allergies go, but... It's summer. We're in the thick of it now. <laughs> almost uh, August. Yeah, I hope you uh, hope you feel better uh, because it can. I'm gonna blend this snout in a little bit. Get that white going. So the trick to working on black paper is like you, you kind of use the tone paper so that you don't have to put on too much thick thick coats to get the kind of tone you want like it's okay if like some of the black showing through or something like that but you don't want like that halo effect where it looks like um it looks like things are outlined with black that's no good so the trick to solving that is that you kind of like overlap your stuff Like a little indentation here that put in. So I'm going to add a little bit of color to the eyes to get those going so that they're not so 
Ouais. Is out there playing poker. So, of course, the eye is white, but there's also like a little bit of brown in it. So I'm kind of starting with that. I don't know. It kind of looks white on screen, but it is in fact actually kind of brown here. with this white a little bit of highlight up here yeah, i have a black one around here as well i think i drew too much black hey richard haven't seen you in a while how you been Uh, Richard is one of my first viewers, um, way back in the day, like back in January when I first started this show. Um, I think he was one of the first people in the chat. Which is kind of cool. Like, probably towards the end of the year, since this is my first year doing all of this stuff, and I, I think I probably will continue with it because, like, it's been so much fun. Um... It was supposed to be like a year-long project, but I've been enjoying it, so I'm probably going to continue it. But anyway, at, at the end of the year, I should do like a kind of like a recap. Because like the whole point of this is to kind of like track my progress. So it would be kind of fun to go back and look at my first picture that I drew, which is terrible. But I don't know. Richard liked it. I actually sent it to Richard because he liked it. Um, it was my first commenter. But it would be kind of cool to go back and kind of like revisit uh, some of these, some of these episodes. It'd be kind of fun to check progress and stuff. Try not to evaporate. Oh, are you in one of the uh, the hot zones? I think, uh, so we've actually had mild temperatures around here, but I think we're starting to get some of that heat that everybody else has been experiencing, like, throughout this week. I don't think it's too bad still. Like, you guys, some of you guys are getting, like, 100 plus degrees and stuff. I think the most that we've gotten, like, I don't, I don't know if we're going to break 100 or not. I think we're going to be up in the 90s this week. But we have actual trees and stuff to protect us. You guys are out there in, like, out west. Some of you guys, at least. Oh, you have a pick you want to submit? I, I think you have my email address. Uh, those of you guys who don't have my email address, it's on the About page. Feel free to send me, you know, like, uh, pictures that you've done pictures you want me to do, you know, I'll consider them, certainly. Um, but yeah, send me, send me things that you've done and, you know, comments and stuff. Like, it'd be kind of cool if, like, you guys commented below and stuff so that everybody can see it. But, like, if you guys just want to send me, like, a, I like emails. <laughs> like, it takes me forever to reply to them, but I enjoy getting them. So if anybody wants to send me some, I'm happy. It's so it's so fun how like a, a picture develops. Like this was this was like um so different just like a few minutes ago. Like what are we like I don't know like thirty minutes into this? But he's starting to get a face. I'm gonna call him a he, even just because he looks like a he. It might be a she. Uh, Lorraine, if you come back and watch this later and stuff, I apologize if I call he a she or whatever. I just don't know. You might have actually mentioned it. I just missed it. 
I try to put details in my pictures, but as far as like just keeping track of details in real life, I'm not very good at that. Yeah, best of luck on healing up there uh, because I can. I I had an uncle who had um, so, shoulder surgery, and I know that that just sucks. But you get the painkillers. That's cool. But yeah, best of luck for speedy recovery, man. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Because you use your arm so much. Like, that's just like one of the worst things. Um, like, I've broken some bones and stuff, and it's never fun. But like, the worst ones are like, like, I've broken my fingers and, and, and such, but I broke my ankle twice, and that's just the worst, because, like, you end up, I mean, you have to walk, right? So, like, anything that you actually use a lot, like your shoulders, that's just, that sucks. Oh, yeah, that's right, I sent you Grogu as well. Yeah, Grogu, I, I like how Grogu turned out. So, I'm going to move into... Some of this fur through here. Yeah, Grogu turned out nice. It's gonna be so weird when I put in that tennis ball. So by the way, this this little circle here, that's gonna be a tennis ball. This this dog is really just enjoying that tennis ball. Like he looks like so laid back, just chilling on the couch, but he's not he's not chilling. He's he's uh he's on a mission. He's got that tennis ball in his mouth. He's doing something. Or now he's chilling because, like, he went on the hunt for the uh, tennis ball earlier, and he is successful. That's the story I'm giving him. Outside of uh, surgery, how's everybody week going? You know, we just kind of got started, but I always try to remember to ask on uh, Tuesdays. The Friday ones are nice because, like, the week's over. You guys can go and have some fun and stuff, but Tuesdays, we're just, we're, we're in the thick of it. Tuesdays are better than Mondays, so. Like, I used to, I used to um, do live streaming on Mondays, but I just found, it, it, there's just no way. Like, I've got way too much going on on Mondays. Seems like everybody comes out of the woodwork and um, wants to check in on projects and stuff like that. Mondays are no fun. But Tuesdays, people have lightened up. And you can actually enjoy yourself a little bit. I think Wednesdays are my best. Like, by Wednesday, everybody's leaving me alone. No, 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 I feel free to be creative. I should really do, like, I should do streams on Wednesdays and Thursdays as well. I should just do a stream every day. Would you guys like a, a stream every day? Like, or is that too much? I need to do a drawing every day. I've been slipping lately. I used to do a drawing every day, but I kind of got a little bit busy. So now I, I do at least two to three drawings a week, but I want to get back to my daily thing. Because I feel like I feel like I'm in a better mood when I draw. Like when I take the time to actually spend time on that and everything. It's uh it's important to me. It's starting to look like a dog. So I don't have a secret treasure hunt. That's on my wish list. 
So I don't have anything to uh, to put out there as a prize. That's the problem. I love treasure hunting, and I love, um, you know, that kind of uh, thing. Uh, but I don't have any money to put out there. I don't have any, like, valuables or anything that somebody would want to go and find. Like, if you guys want to go find some, like, I don't know, like, laundry lint, I've got that. <laughs> I can I can hide some drawings. I've got I've got a million drawings. You you guys want me to hide these things? I can do that. I can laminate them and put them out in the woods for you guys to find. I can do that. <laughs> not not a drawing. <laughs> not a drawing where you win something, kid. <laughs> Yeah, drawing to win a drawing. How's that? Actually, that sounds kind of cool. I should be doing contests like that. Like, I, I enjoy drawing pictures. I can't, you know, I obviously can't um, do every picture in the world. So it would be kind of cool if I did some sort of, like, contest so that, you know, those of you guys who do want me to draw something, you get kind of, like, prioritized if you win or something. I think that that's probably fair. So, like, no prize money, because I don't have any money, but, um, you know, like, if you want to draw, like, a pet drawing or, or something like that, or really, whatever you want. Like, I'm, I'm up for drawing anything, so whatever you want me to draw, I'll, I'll draw it if you win. But, I don't know. I don't know how, like, contests work. It's a cool idea. I'll, I'll give it some thought. But as far as, like, a... Um, Oh, a Motley Crew. I, th I thought you were saying you're the parent of the Motley Crew. I like Motley Crew. I, I I used to listen to them, but um, you you're talking about your pets. I'm a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to do it like a treasure hunt. I I like um, I like the secret. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with the secret treasure hunt. And um, back in the day, the masquerade. Uh, where like clues are in the form of like like an illustration or a painting or something like that. I like that. Um, I would love to do something like that to be honest. And I could probably do that. Like I could probably come up with a treasure hunt, but I don't know. I gotta save up some money or whatever, so that there's some prize, some some incentive. Like in the um in the secret treasure hunt, those things that people are looking for, it's you know it's only worth like two thousand dollars, but. The, um, it's the, uh, it's the street cred. It's the glory that you're really going for. Because the thing about that is there's only 12 of those in the entire world. So if you find one, you become legend overnight. It's like the, uh, the Forrest Finn thing. One of the uh, reasons why it was so special is there, there was only one set. And well, some people believe there's more than one, but Officially, there was only like one chest for people to find, and that makes it unique. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting. And some people actually think there were more than one chest. Like, some people think it's still out there. It's kind of interesting. Um, it's, it's interesting all the different ideas that people had and continue to have about that treasure hunt. Um, like, I never met... I never met anybody that had the same soul as anybody else. You know, everybody, everybody's was unique. They, they all put their own special touch on it. I, I thought that was kind of fascinating. Um, of course, you know, only one was right, but everybody had their own little pick on it. No surprise. My soul actually involved the uh, illustrations in that book a lot. Like, I don't know, to this day, I actually think that the illustrations were probably important. I don't know how, like, I had thoughts in the past, but I was a New Mexico searcher, so all my ideas were wrong. But that's okay, I felt, I felt okay with that, because, like, it, it was fun, you know. I never really thought I'd win anyway, I just thought it'd be nice. money hunt. 
Oh, that yeah. So then I I think that is like I don't know. I don't know all the different treasure hunts that are out there, but I think I heard about the money hunt. That one has illustrations as well. I think. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it because, like and show my ignorance, but my impression was that that one also involved photos or not photos, I illustrations and stuff. So I, I think the best treasure hunts involve some sort of illustration um, of some type, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's like, I don't know, like doodles or something that you're supposed to look for hints in, or if it's out and out, like a treasure map, you know, like if you think back to Goonies, um, you know, they were, they had a treasure map and stuff and, and it was still like solving clues and stuff like that, trying to figure things out. I think that's great. It should be, uh, it should be, there should at least be at minimum a treasure map of some sort. Let's see, I need a different pencil here. I think maybe this one. Let's get this color. I guess that'll work. Anyway, that's my take on it. If you're going to do a treasure hunt, you need pictures. Some visual. You know, people people engage with treasure hunts in different ways. Like, some people are very, like, I don't know, like, analytical. Um, it's kind of like why, why I'm drawing anyway. Like, I'm a computer programmer, but computer programming is very analytical. Like, you spend a lot of time... Um, you know, I don't really believe there's a left brain and a right brain, like how people say there are. But you know at least figuratively there is a left brain and right brain there is the part of the brain that has you solving um you know math problems and then there's a part of a brain that has you solving spatial uh, uh problems right so like i don't know if it's technically the right brain left brain i think all the brain is in in play when you're actually problem solving like that but at least metaphorically, there is a left brain and right brain. And I think that a, tre a really good treasure hunt uh, should probably, you know, in involve people on each level, right? So, like, people who are more visual, they should have something to do to uh, have fun with it. And the people who are more analytical, they should also have some, you know, throw in a little bit of cryptography, people like that kind of stuff. You know, the Cypher and the uh, Codebreaker Charlies, I guess they're called. Um, throw in a little bit of that, but then also throw in some pictures for people to uh, mull over. And then you've got a proper treasure hunt, I think. Um, you know, it's all the rage now to have a poem as well. So have a poem. Have, uh, have something that you have to, like, do some sort of code breaking on, and then also have some pictures for people to look at and try to and, and ponder like what's that picture about? And then you've got a treasure hunt. Easy peasy. I don't really know. I think that would be cool though. So these uh, these type of pictures do take forever to do, um, and that's just because there's like so much detail in them but at least at least we got something cute to look at here so when doing this um i should probably talk a little bit about what i'm doing here um so when, when doing these pastels, I don't really throw down like a lot of um, pastel at one time. Like I, I definitely keep a light touch to it. I uh, just kind of scrape the pencil across the page. First off, it makes a cool noise on the sanded paper. You hear this like scratching noise. Um, but also, you know, like I like to keep it light because then I can, then I can continue to add to it. Um, uh, more layers above it. It's the more layers above it that really give the detail. That well, the things that people look at is detail. So like I, I think you know the eye being there is a detail, but people like to see um you know variations in color and fur and things like that. 
that that's all occurs because like you keep the first layer really really light and you're just like applying large amounts of color at one time but very light color that you can come back and go over several times actually that that's the reason why they take so long you end up drawing the same picture i don't know hundreds of times really probably in the space of one picture but it's fun it's, it's kind of cool to watch it develop ballad of leroy's loot yeah so like I, I was talking about um this i i don't know how it came up but we were just talking about treasure hunts in general i think just because of where i live um if i did a treasure hunt it would have to be like bootlegging inspired you know like moonshine um people running uh like liquor just because there's like a big history of that here in in uh this state like if i hid something in this state it would have to be related to uh like the prohibition era and um bootlegging and all that stuff which you know there's pretty good history of here in uh, kentucky i don't know if i would limit it to kentucky though i would probably do like an appalachian mountains type thing because even though i live here i do i do get out sometimes like uh, i've been down in south carolina this year i've been up to ohio i get around I think I've been to Indiana, but I'm not sure. I don't know if I went to Indiana this year or not. Definitely Ohio. I guess I should stop avoiding that ball and you go ahead and get that ball because it looks like he has this weird mouth right now. So let me go ahead and tackle this uh, ball real quick and then I'll come back to his uh, face. Oh, well, let me blend this stuff in here real quick. And then I'll do the ball. Because the ball is cute. The ball is what really makes the picture. Well, besides the dog. The dog's adorable, but the ball makes the dog super adorable. We all have... Every dog has this favorite toy. I don't know if this is this dog's favorite toy, but it certainly looks like it. Alright, now let me go ahead and try to get this going. So this is a almost like a neon tennis ball. You guys know the type. I'm going to start with this really, really light green, and then I'll come in and maybe add some shadows. So I have to be careful here to make sure this round is like not that great at drawing circles. Again, super light to start, and then I'll worry about making it denser i guess is the right word hey uh lazello uh it's okay like we've just been sitting here talking about treasure hunts that's like one of my other um hobbies is like uh you know when somebody hides something out in the woods and <clears throat> gives you clues to go and find it and stuff uh a lot of my viewers are from like a treasure hunt community that i was like in into and um they come in here and they talk about treasure hunts every now and then which is kind of cool so unless you're into treasure hunts you didn't miss much like goonie stuff So like starting with um like a black tone paper you have to go over these things several times to get something as bright as a tennis ball yeah that that's what i'll do packer i'll, I'll just you know everybody hides gold in the woods i'll hide silver um and uh put it out in the woods give some clues and stuff I don't want to say that I'm going to do that because then people will hold me to it, but that would be nice. Uh, for the record, I do not have gold or silver to hide, so don't expect that anytime soon. But I think that would be cool. You know, you go out and you hide a treasure and then you um, you draw pictures that have clues in them. 
like um that Byron Priest's uh secret. That'd be really cool. Maybe someday. So also because you use a light touch on putting down the color, you can likewise use a light touch when blending so that you don't just kind of scrape all the uh, pastel off the paper. Uh, Lazella wasn't here when I talked about it, but um, this is like uh, treated paper essentially. So I start with watercolor paper. I give it a coat of um, acrylic to give it the color that I want, which in this case I thought would be black because the reference photo has like, and like he's sitting on a black couch. Um, so I thought black would be a good undertone for this. And then um, I come back and add clear gesso to give it the texture that you need to catch this pastel. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I'm increasing the thickness of like the pressure, I guess, of um, each mark here just to kind of brighten up that ball because that, that ball is super bright in the reference photo, as neon balls are. And then a little bit of darker green over here because it's kind of in the shadow of his mouth. And I think that kind of extends around a bit. But not too much, like, there's not like a lot of shadow in this. And then there is one other color. I don't know if I have it. Maybe this. That's where I might introduce the wrong color, but put this in here. It's a different yellow alongside here. I don't think it's going to ever be as bright as I want it to be, but. I, I just kind of want the shape in there right now. And then I can worry about like whether or not I can get it as bright as I want it to be later. Yeah, it, so it, I mean, it's partly round. Like it's under its lip. Sorry, I, I need to pay attention to the chat. Um, is it here just musing? Yeah, it, it's partly round. Like this part needs to be round. Not the whole thing. So this is the stripe on the ball. And I'm probably gonna screw this up, but that's okay. This is a drawing for um, uh, Lorraine. Like I did her cats the other day. Um, this is her dog. And uh, I like drawing for Lorraine because she's super nice and very forgiving. So like if I screw something up, I think that she would like give me a pass. But I'm going to try really hard. Like she has never yelled at me. Yeah, that's cool, Lorraine. Like, um, have you ever tried pan pastel? Um, I want to get some of those, but I can't afford like all the colors. But I was thinking I enjoy like color mixing, so I might. I might just get the primary colors and maybe one or two other colors and um, of the pan pastel and just kind of mix them. I saw somebody do that where they have like a separate sheet of paper over here. They mix them on that sheet of paper and then they kind of like, I don't know, kind of brush it into the uh, picture from there. I want to give that a shot. I think that'd be fun. Maybe if I add a little bit of white in here, that'll brighten it up. Anyway, this this picture is still in its infancy. Like, I'm not going to be able to finish this picture today. So, like, maybe I'll come back and tinker with that ball a little bit later. I think it's a good start. I should have left this, like, white when I was doing the underpainting. And then I wouldn't have to struggle so much in bringing out the brightness to it. Anyway, that's a good start. Anyway, it looks like a tennis ball to me. Like it looks more like a tennis ball in person than it does on camera. So I'm happy enough with that. All right, so I think I'm going to kind of put in this tongue. It sounds really weird, but 
I think I'm going to start with this color, I think. Yeah, uh, because I can. I, I, I caught what you were saying. But, um, you guys can say negative things. I don't take offense to it. Like if if I uh, if you guys say it sucks, I'll, I'll try to fix it. If I can't fix it, well, that's just my limitations, you know. I don't I don't mind. Um, sometimes I actually agree with you guys. Like um, you know, like actually people are people have been really nice. So I can't say that like I've had to consider whether or not somebody was right. Like. Um, in terms of like criticism, but I accept criticism, I think really well, because like, I don't know, if, uh, if, if you guys notice a problem with it that I don't notice, then I'm appreciative that you guys notice that, so I can try to fix it. I, I may not be successful, but I'll at least give it a shot. And then if you guys notice something I haven't, like, if you guys notice something I haven't noticed at all, that's good because I can try to fix it. If you guys notice something that I have already noticed, I mean, that's just the way it is. Like, um, I mean, at, at that point, I would be like, yeah, you're right. That does kind of suck. Because I've considered what, what you're looking at, and I come to the conclusion that I can't fix it because I just don't have that skill set yet. But anyway. I don't get that a lot. Like, you guys are actually super nice. But I don't want anybody to feel like they have to censor themselves either. Like, obviously, don't be a jerk about it. But, you know, if, you, if you've got actual constructive criticism, I'm, I'm open to it. Like, um, I like it when people give criticism where they're not just like... Um, Oh, I don't like it, right? Like, that's not helpful. Like, it, what, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, your view is going to be subjective. So, like, I can't, I literally can't do anything about it. Um, but if you come in and, like, you were to say, well, I don't know, Jeremy, I don't think the colors are right. You know, that's constructive criticism because I can re I can look at them and be like, no, I don't know. I, I tried, but uh, maybe you're right. Maybe the colors are off. Something like that. Something constructive. Which I think for the most part. Like, I'll tell you what I hate. I don't hate it. I, I just, it's frustrating. So, like, when you put up a video, uh, again, this doesn't happen all that often, but it does happen. Like, sometimes I'll put up a video and uh, I'll get a dislike, right? Well, it's the internet. Obviously, you're going to get dislikes, so you can't cry about it. I mean, it's not a big deal. You're, it's just going to happen. You're going to get dislikes. Um like, and honestly, I don't put too much thought into it. I'm like, well, you know, somebody out there didn't like that, but you don't know why. And that that's the frustrating part. So, like, did they not like, like, especially with, like, a short, for example. You guys know what the shorts are. Those are those little time-lapse videos and stuff. So, the way I do the shorts is uh, I do the time-lapse, and then I try to pick a song for it and so on. So, the problem is you get a you get a thumbs down, right? And you're like, well, crap, did they not like it? What can I do to fix it? You have no idea because they didn't leave a comment. So a, a thumbs down without a comment is is frustrating because, like, what do you do with that? You, there's nothing you can do with it. Uh, if, if somebody gives a thumbs down and actually told you what they didn't like about it, that would be absolutely, absolutely something I'm interested in because I enjoy actually constructive criticism. But without that comment, I don't know, like, Maybe they hate the song I picked. Maybe they don't like, like, maybe it's not their style or something. Like, they're into, like, ultra-realism, and my stuff is kind of sketchy, you know? Like, I don't bother making it look like a photo or something. So, I don't know. I have no idea when you don't leave a comment what you dislike about it. Because if you left a comment... I might actually agree with you. I might be like, yeah, you know what? That, that part does suck. You're right. I agree with you. I would give myself a thumbs down too. <laughs> I don't know. I have nothing to be to judge um, the dislike about it. I try not to to think about it too much because really people have all kinds of different reasons. Like I, 
I just, I don't ever actually dislike a video. Like, I feel like that's like extra effort or whatever, but you know, I've unsubscribed from channels and stuff. Um, you know, but there's a million different reasons. Like sometimes, I don't know, I'm just getting too many notifications or it's just not the thing that I'm into at the moment. It may be actually something that I'm into. I'm just not into at the moment. So like, I'll come back and resubscribe in the future when I am into it. There's a bunch of different re reasons why people subscribe and unsubscribe. So I don't, I don't, I don't waste a lot of time thinking about that, but those down and like those dislikes on videos and stuff, those are frustrating because I don't know why the person's disliking you. And I, I can't sit there and say, well, that's something I can't change or it is something I can change. I get, I think I draw pretty consistent things. Um, you might subscribe to my channel. Um, oh, the Team Olivia thing. Uh, the Team Olivia, Olivia thing is a friend of mine that's uh, struggling with uh, um, uh, cancer. Uh, and uh, I'm just wearing a t-shirt to show support. Anyway, what I was saying is like, um, yeah, what was I saying? Um, I think I was talking about the uh, subscribe and unsubscribe and stuff like that. Oh, um, yeah. So like, I, I, I think I draw pretty consistent things. So like I, I draw pets, I'm trying to increase my skill set with other uh, things. So like I draw people portraits, the things that I'm interested in getting better at. Um, I can see like maybe somebody coming in who subscribed because they enjoy watching pet pictures. And then, you know, here I am drawing like a portrait or something. And they're like, eh, I'm not really into the portraits. I, I subscribe for the pets. So who knows why people subscribe and unsubscribe i have no clue i don't know maybe i say something that some somebody finds i mean everybody finds everything offensive these days so maybe i i said something that somebody didn't like i have no idea so i try not to i try not to worry about it i barely ever consider it but it is curious i i am kind of curious how that works And then also sometimes you get unsubscribes just because uh, YouTube's cleaning up things like there are um, there are like robot accounts or whatever, like not real accounts. And uh, every now and then YouTube cleans that stuff up or somebody might delete their account or, or whatever. They're not really unsubscribing from you. They're just like unsubscribing from the Internet. You know, I don't I don't know. I'm just starting out scenarios. Have you tried to uh, have you tried to examine all the different reasons why? Now, if I posted a picture and literally everybody hated it, that would suck. I mean, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't take it personally. I would just be like, well, I ain't drawing that picture again. Somebody really hates that dog I drew. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows why people do things that they do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why people actually go, um, yeah, the kids got a good point. Maybe they clicked the wrong button. Um, I don't know why people take the time and not just for my videos. Like I, I don't get a, um, you know, knock on wood. Uh, and I appreciate your guys' support because you guys are really nice. Um, I don't get a lot of dislikes. Um, I, I, you know, like I, I feel like I get my fair share, but I don't get a lot. Um, but I feel bad for the people um especially kids right so like you can see kids come on youtube and they're really just trying hard to um to like explore you know the, their 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 passion right so like they're into drawing they're not there on the skill set yet that's not something you dislike that's something you encourage actually is if a if somebody I don't, you know just throw out an age um like if somebody like 12 years old or something you know, just learning to draw comes in and makes a video. It should not matter how good that video is. You should definitely, definitely be encouraging that kid to pursue their passion because we've all been there. You know, we all started off as like 12 year old kids trying to draw, you know, it's not going to be Leonardo da Vinci quality. You know, it just isn't. I don't know. There's some, man, there's actually, I should take that back. There are some kids that are really, really good at uh, art and they blow me away. 
but it's not typical you know those those kids are are special um but anyway uh my point is you should applaud and of course most you guys would I, i'm just saying like in general um you know that that sort of activity should be applauded like people should like somebody should pull that kid to the side and be like look you're you're on the right path dude keep it up that's my VR but I feel like most of you guys are probably there as well like you guys you guys like um, supporting the arts and you guys are I don't know like I don't know how I ended up with such a nice audience, but you guys are all super nice and, you know, believe me, it doesn't go unnoticed. You guys are amazing. I don't deserve you guys. Because I, I know what it could be like. I could be in here, like, where some troll was just in here, like, hating on everything, and that's no good. There's a... It is a blessing that I ended up with such a great group of people here. That's my take on it. I think all of you guys are awesome. And I appreciate you. Because probably, like, I mean, I would continue drawing. That's kind of just something I'm going to do. But I probably wouldn't stream much if, like, somebody was just going to be dumping on it every time. So it is nice to chat with you guys. Plus, you guys are kind of cool. Like, you, you guys have such a, a wide variety of backgrounds and things that you're interested in. I learn something new virtually every time I come on. It's a beautiful doggy. I love this doggy. It's so cute. Lorraine's got the best pet. She's not exclusive in that, but she's got, she's got fun pets to draw. All right, um, let's see, let's look at there. Hi, Angela. Okay, that's a great uh, question. So uh, this paper is tone paper, but there's a, like I've already mentioned it, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention it again because I, I like the process. So this is actually watercolor paper. It's not the black paper that I usually use. The black paper I usually use is like a black mixed media paper from a, uh Kinson Kinson mixed media um and um the the thing about it is 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 a little bit thin for what I like to do with uh pastel uh pictures so what I like to do when I'm working in pastel is I like to use watercolor paper as um you know just as a, a different alternative to some of the more expensive um paper out there that's specifically designed for like pastels so like there's something called pastel matte for example that works really great with pastels, but it's a little on the pricey side. Um, so I like to make my own surface for it. And uh, that's what's going on here. So it's watercolor paper that I paint black with acrylic to kind of give it a tone. It doesn't have to be black. It could be whatever color that you want. In this case, the dog's lounging on a black couch. It takes up a lot of the pictures. So I thought black would work. Um, plus I'm used to drawing on black anyway. Anyway, um, from there, I had uh, something called clear gesso. And what the clear gesso does is it gives you a texture that works really good with these um, pastels because the pastels are kind of like chalk. They need a, like a textured surface in order to, uh, to adhere to it. And, um, you know, you're not going to get that with just uh, like painting over acrylic. You, you basically have to add that sand essentially to it. Um, I say sand, I think it's uh, actually like marble sand like marble dust and um it's it's kind of in the gesso the gesso is basically like a clear glue that binds that um that texture to the paper sorry and, and um and that's what it is it's um it's basically a sanded paper but it doesn't start off that way um uh, you know you, you have to kind of create it great question 
So if you're into drawing and you want to get pastel the shot, this is an inexpensive way to get into it. Now you can buy things like pastel mat, but you know, go on Amazon. It's it's not cheap. I think uh, I think I did the math. Like, don't quote me on this because like I kind of gave up after I just saw it. But um, I think when it, when you break it down, it was like two dollars per pa paper, which you know isn't the end of the world. You know, if you're drawing a picture and, and you know. You want to spend two dollars um you know buy the pass on that um i'll probably buy some at some point just to give it a shot but um i enjoy this um this way of doing it plus i get to choose what color the tone is you know i get to like in this case i, I thought black would really work well and I, i'm liking how it's turning out so i like having that kind of flexibility and also i've done it where i do a lot of the picture in acrylic first. So like I actually try to paint the picture and then I come back with the pastel and do details. Now I'm not doing that here, but I've done that. Um, like for example, I did a golden retriever, which I think is on my channel is like the featured video. Like there, I actually painted the body of the, um, the golden retriever in um, acrylic. So it, it could speed up the process if you, if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, basically a long drawn out way to say it's watercolor paper with some, uh, with some, um, additional things to it to make it work well with that pastel. And, um, the acrylic bit, you know, that's optional. You don't have to do the acrylic bit. You can just sand the, pa the watercolor paper with the clear gesso by itself. If you don't want to, if you just wanted to use white, for example, um also i've seen people do um uh actual watercolor instead of acrylic that's fine um i i do the uh, acrylic um for no real reason i do it just because i have acrylics and i can mix the colors and all that stuff i'm not there yet on uh watercolor techniques i'm still learning so i'm more comfortable with acrylics But again, this is just black. It's not like you need a lot of skill to make that happen. But yeah, I've seen people do uh, watercolor on the watercolor paper before applying the clear gesso. The real trick is the clear gesso. Like that's that's what really works. Honestly, the first black paper that I used before I bought the uh, black mixed media stuff is I just used black construction paper. And that is so thin and so super smooth. You can't really get anything to stick to it. Um, so I don't recommend that. Uh, I've got some pictures that I've done that that with and I made it work, but it's a pain in the butt. Like basically um, you're not gonna get very much color onto the paper with color, <laughs> with the uh, construction paper. But you know, construction paper is cheap. Um, so that's how I started working on black paper, but I quickly grew out of that because it just wasn't working for me. Um, let's see, what are some other thoughts on that? Oh, thanks, uh, Lozello. So, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's not really my technique. I, I learned it from somebody else. Um, I forget who, it was, it was somebody on YouTube. Um, but it really works well and I like it. And um, basically the reason I started doing it is I, I, I've always liked doing pastels even ever since I was a kid. Um, and really to work with pastels, you really don't want to just use white paper. You kind of want to use the tone paper. And I kept wanting to use tone paper, but every time I went to the store, you know, I'm cheap, you know, <laughs> I could probably afford to pick up some tone paper, but like if there's a way around it, I'll, I'll find that way. Um, but I was looking at like, you know, I, I think it was like $15, $20 for some tone paper or something and not a lot of pieces of paper. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm just learning here. I don't want to be wasting a lot of expensive paper. So I'm like, well, watercolor is cheap. So I'll draw on watercolor. And then the first thing, <laughs> I try to be humble. I'm not, I'm not always humble, but um, I, uh, so I started, um, looking at watercolor just because I also like the thickness of watercolor. Like, um, this is pretty thick paper. I like that. And, um, anyway, so I, I'm like, well, I have all this watercolor paper around because it was super cheap and you can buy it anywhere. 
Uh, so I'm like, maybe I can make watercolor work. And then the, you know, the first couple of things I noticed is, well, watercolor paper is uh, textured, right? So like, oh, it was so tough getting that worked out, right? Especially with colored pencils on watercolor paper. That's such a pain. Um, so I'm like, well, I'll, I'll start blending my pastels and fill in some of those cracks and stuff. And that worked well. But there's only so many layers you can get in on the watercolor paper uh, before you run out of tooth. And um, that was the next problem. So like, how do you solve that? And then I learned about the, um, you know, the ability to actually apply tooth to the paper with that clear gesso. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is a game changer for me. This is something that will work for me, something I'm happy with, something that's not that expensive. The clear gesso isn't, isn't like, the cheapest thing in the world is like $12 for like, I think it was 12, maybe it was 14, uh, $14 for like an eight ounce bottle. But it, you know, it only takes a little bit to cover. This is nine by 12 paper. Um, it only takes a little bit, like, I don't know. I want to say a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more than the tablespoon of, um, clear gesso to coat this entire paper. And you only need to do the one coat. And that gives you this tooth that you can use and you know, the rest is history, I guess. It works. And uh, it works very well. And um, I'm pretty happy with it. So you, by using the uh, clear gesso, you can you can get a couple of layers of pencil. Like, I don't know. Like, there's, a, there's an upper limit. But, like, if I come in here and I keep going over and over the, uh, like, putting more fur or highlights on the fur or something like that, you're going to run into a limit somewhere because it's not passed on that. Um, pastel mat holds like multiple layers, um, you know, quite a few actually. My understanding, I don't know, uh, but this uh, clear gesso technique, it, it's definitely good for a couple of layers. And honestly, in my pictures, there's only so many layers anyway. You've got the the shadow tones of these uh, fur, <clears throat> this uh, this fur coat. You have like the highlights, and you have the mid tones. That, that's really only like three layers, and sometimes I. Sometimes I add a few more, but that, that's really all there is to it. Um, somebody creating a really complex picture that takes like, I don't know, 500 hours or something, they might need a little more, but for me, I'm happy with what I can do with this, uh, this watercolor paper. Yeah, so the fixative, um, yeah, this fixative would give you more um, uh, layers. So the, like actually the, on the fixative thing, so like I have the, uh, the workable fixative, which does give you that tooth. And I thought, well, that would be kind of cool. Like maybe I could just use um, watercolor paper with that on it. And I think that would work, but um, it, I don't think it works as well as this clear gesso. This clear gesso, um, like, I don't know if you can, you probably can't hear that because I adjusted the sound so that you don't pick up my dogs walking on my hardwood floor. Um, but it feels like sandpaper. Like it, it, it's like a really fine sandpaper. Um, and uh Workable fixative will get you close to that, but it's not going to be quite the same. But yeah, if you wanted to, um, like if I ran out of, like ran into an issue where I need to add more layers, I could add workable fixative to this and continue in the process if I wanted to. That's a, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. But to be honest with you, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that kind of complicated drawings. You know, I don't have patience for it, but. One of these days, maybe I'll do something that takes, you know, 40 hours or something. If I, if I do something that takes 40 hours, I'll probably, like, end up having to, um, you know, go through that, that extra effort. Um, probably if I got to the point where I was doing a picture like that, I would probably try to see how much I could actually accomplish like, again, here I'm just using black, right? But there's no real reason why this couldn't be like a, an actual acrylic painting um, that I'm coming back over and adding some details with pastel. I think that's the approach I would try if I ever ran into that situation where I'm trying to do something highly detailed that has all those different layers we're talking about. Like here, I'm, I'm basically using one color Another color, maybe to add some shadows that aren't already there from leaving the black explode, exposed. 
And then I'm coming back over here with this other color. Maybe I might add in an additional color if needed or something, like a white instead of just this kind of like blonde here. Um, but I typically don't go that far with it. I just want a pretty picture. It doesn't take a lot of layers to make a pretty picture. It looks like the dog. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Now that's something I would love to do, to be honest. Mural painting. Oh, I would love that. I love street art. The side of a building would be awesome. There you go. I have a new goal now. Like, um, one day I would love to be commissioned to do a mural on the side of a building. That would be so cool. I feel like I would definitely need to uh, develop a style that um, is more interesting than just what I'm doing now. Right now, I'm just enjoying drawing pet pictures, but when you're when you're dealing with a uh, street art and a mural and all that jazz, uh, you better be good at composition and coming up with good subject matters. Tell a story, you know, like the story here is a dog is sitting on the couch after catching a ball. It's built into the photo I'm working off of. It's not like I created that story. Um, and you know, I'll get there. I feel like that's a little bit further down the road, you know, progressing to that kind of being that kind of an artist, you know, where you're actually creating stories through your art that's completely original. Something that you're into, something, some story that you want to tell that means something to you. I don't know. Like, I feel like that's a lot harder than just drawing a picture. So, right now I'm just having fun with it. I don't, I don't feel like I have a lot to say through my art. <gasps> Bully, I can paint the side of your house? Oh, that's awesome. All right, I'll be right there. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> Uh, you're buying the paint. I'm not buying the paint. You pay for the paint, I'll paint the side of your house. It's not going to look like the you want. I assume you want it to be all one color. It's definitely not going to look like that. You're going to have cool stuff on the side of your house. Like You're like, oh, I can get some free labor where somebody will come and paint my house. No, 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 no. You're going to have a mural on your house. Probably going to be Kentucky people making moonshine. That's what's going to be on the side of your house. Because <laughs> I think that's the next painting I want to do. I actually want to find some uh, historical pictures of people making moonshine and, and make that. That would be fun. So th this dog is super cute. It's got these like almost like a mane, like a lion's mane coming out the side. I, I like it when I uh, get to draw dogs like that because it's, it's almost like drawing people hair. It's a, a lot of fun. Again, for those of you who thought that this picture was going to be done in one night, nah, this is, this is going to take a little while. I'm doing it for Lorraine. She actually asked me to do this, so I wanted to take some time with it. Like when it's When it's a person's pet, I take a little more care with it than if I'm just drawing a, uh, you know, some random picture that I found reference picture for. Plus, I could probably speed this up. I am chatting a lot. But that's the fun part about doing live streams. I mean, I'm, I'm really just here to hang out with you guys. This whole drawing business is just like an excuse. Like, I feel like you guys wouldn't hang out with me and talk to me if I wasn't drawing. This is kind of like I'm cheating here just so that you guys could talk to me. Like, I don't, I don't think you guys would tune in just to hear me talking about whatever's on my mind. This is like, it's like, well, I, I need friends and I want people to talk to me. How do I, how do I trick people into talking? Uh, you know what? I'll draw a picture. There you go. I'm just kidding. So is that what you want on the side of your house, uh, Huli? You want uh, like a big moonshine um, thing going on? Guys, lay down. When I whenever I get excited, that doesn't mean it's done. Go lay down. 
I think they respond to my tone of voice. Like, I get excited about painting Huli's house, and they think, oh, the picture's done. Go lay down. Go lay down. That one's Guinness. Guinness thinks I'm done drawing. Hey, don't push buttons. <laughs> but if Libra painted it, it would look like a cartoon. Libra sees the world as a cartoon. Any Spider Verse fans out there? I love that movie. Uh, what I like about it is that they kind of continued. Well, I mean, you know, they did the first movie, and it was a continuation of that. But uh, Marvel's on this thing where they're doing like. I don't know, like multiple realities, kind of like different dimensions, alternate timelines, you know, basically the uh, the multiverse. And uh, I like how they're doing that in the Spider-Verse thing where it, it's, all, it's other realities, but they're all cartoon, right? Like, um, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that there's one live action character in the movie but most of those universes they deal with they're like cartoon universes that's how leroy sees the world he's in a cartoon universe which is somewhere adjacent to our own universe yeah maven maven can help build it like paint her house yeah who we have no idea what she's in store for wait till i get a hold of her house so many bright colors to choose from. I'm not a bright color kind of person, but when I'm done with her house, it's going to look like, it's going to look like the neon 80s. That's what it's going to look like. It's going to look like, um, oh, what was that show? Saved by the Bell, all the different neon colors on the, on that show. That's what her house is going to look like. Um, you ever go to like one of those laser tag places and they have the black lights up and it looks like, uh, I don't know, like a Grateful Dead poster? That's what her house is going to look like. It's going to be awesome. She's going to so regret her decision. Or she might love it. I don't know. I think Huli would like it. It's gonna look, she's going to be like, yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. You guys ever see that show, uh, Trading Spaces? They used to be on TLC back in the day. I don't know. Maybe it's still on. I, I don't watch that kind of TV that much anymore. Um, but basically, neighbors would swap houses, and they would have designers come in and uh, redo, like, a room in the, the house or something. And um, they have these... <laughs> the reason why I bring it up is because this is basically how Huli's house is going to go. So they have these uh, designers come in, and the... Uh, and the neighbors get to decide, not the homeowners, the neighbors get to decide the direction of the design of the room. And, um, you know, they try to base it on something that they think that the homeowner would like, but they're, they're neighbors, they're friends or whatever, so they don't really know. Um, but they work with the designer, and the designer would come in and choose, all, you know, all the different colors, make all the decisions, and so on. Uh, I think that was the format. That's how I'm remembering it, at least. But anyway, my point is, I think those designers were basically trolling by the end of that show because like they started off pretty straightforward. Like they would do really nice designs that the homeowner would like. They were all kind of like conservative in the designs. It was, it was just, you know, like a nice pretty living room or something like that. But by the end of the shows, they were like picking like weird colors and like these outlandish designs and either they were just trying to pad their portfolios with like crazy stuff or they were completely trolling just for the show. But, oh man, homeowners hated it. They were like, what did you do to my living room? That sort of stuff. Or like, why, why did you turn my bedroom into this like weird oasis? You know, weird stuff. Which I think would actually be kind of cool. Like if, if you had like an oasis in your bedroom or something like that. But anyway, that's that's what's gonna happen to Huli's house. She thinks she wants it, but when it's all said and done, she's going to be like, what did you do to my house? Camouflage. That's what I would paint it. I would paint 
Spoolie's house camouflage so that when she comes home from work, she can't find her house. <laughs> So basically, Huli's going to regret inviting me to go to the house. No, I, I, I think uh, I think I could paint a mural. I'm joking, of course, about everything I just said, but um, I think uh, I think I could paint a cool, cool mural. I think it'd be easier actually because you have such a large area that um, you don't have to worry so much about. Um, details right so like one big swath of color doesn't have to have a lot of detail because you're seeing it from a distance and uh when you do that you know it looks more detailed than it actually is so you see how like i'm applying this highlight over you got one two three about three different layers that's what that clear gesso does for you it allows you to come in over what you've already done and apply an opaque highlight. In some mediums, that's actually very challenging. So like in watercolor, you can't really apply highlights over dark areas. But with pastel, or even uh, colored pencils actually, colored pencils, depending on how hard you're pressing down, it might just blend with the lower layers. Um, with this pastel, uh, um, that's what I like about pastel versus colored pencils, by the way, is that, uh, I like how it blends. Um, you can either use it softly to kind of blend it in with the layer below it, or you can just kind of like really press down and it creates this opaque layer of highlight. Honestly, that that's really what I like about the pastel. It's like the highlight. I also like how easily you can just kind of use a blending stump to smooth in. Like it's basically like charcoal like that. You don't get that kind of stuff with um um colored pencils colored pencils are a lot more challenging that way don't paint a bat <laughs> she's not into bats really what's the story with bats no i would paint the the coolest mural on her wall like i don't know where huli lives in the world but I would look into like the history of the place or whatever, create something that um, um, matches the history of whatever town she lives in. So that, you know, not just her, but all the neighbors and passerbys, they could all enjoy it. And, um, you know, people would want to go by her house just to see it, that sort of thing. It would be great. I think it would be fun. I don't think I would use spray paint though. Like I don't know if I'm that kind of artist. I've never really been into like airbrushing or anything like that. Um, I like graffiti art, but I don't know. It's not really my thing. You know what I would do? I would do it in pastel. Just like big large chunks of pastel and like a lot of fixative. <laughs> Langley, Virginia. That's funny. Yeah, Huli's in the CIA. I don't know. I don't want to start any rumors, guys. Even if they are true. But yeah, so like, I don't know. I think that'd be kind of cool. Let's do a um, like a historical mural or something like that. Like um, not here, but um, further north along the Ohio River, a lot of the towns there have these uh, flood wall mirror uh, murals. So what that is is um, the Ohio River floods a lot, and uh, historically, that's cost a lot of money. Um, where it kind of floods into town and causes some damage and, and so on. I'm sure they have these type of things all along the Mississippi as well, but. Um, yeah, so flood wall murals are a big thing because they they do these big concrete slabs just to hold the water off. Um, and they're ugly and gray and, you know, not very good for tourism and stuff. Um, so 
uh, a lot of these towns along the river, they they do hire mural artists to come in and kind of like liven it up a little bit. And of course, you know, in situations like the Ohio River, which was very steeped in history, they would want scenes from that. So like, I think the, uh, the flood wall closest to me has uh, scenes of, um, I don't know, like the old flat boats coming down the river uh, you know, early settlers, um, it was actually a Buffalo crossing. So like they have like pictures of that, a lot of native American type th things. That's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of mural I think I would like to do. Side of a building would be kind of cool too. I just don't think I'm cool enough to do like street art in a city or something. I, I don't know. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what to create there. All right, I feel like this is done enough where I can tinker with it, but it's a good base. I'm going to move on to the other side. Hey, thanks, Larry. I appreciate it. Have a good one. I appreciate you stopping in. Hey, Briorama. Um, sometimes, like I should mention that sometimes I just like, you know, ramble on and stuff like that. If I ever do say anything that offends anybody, give me the benefit of the doubt. I'm probably just joking or just trying to fill the air. I'm not trying to like actually make anybody upset or anything like that. Uh, most times I'm just, you know, talking. So, don't take offense. Um, that I didn't say that because anybody seems offended. I'm just thinking in my head. Yeah, I do that a lot. I do ramble. Um, I've got, so it's funny. Um, I don't. I've always talked to myself, but I, I used to talk to myself less. Uh, since doing this show, I find sometimes when I'm walking around the supermarket, I narrate what I'm doing. Like, oh, I'm going to go get some eggs. And uh, yeah, eggs are good, Jeremy. Um, let's go get some eggs. And I just have this conversation with myself, usually in my head, but sometimes it comes out out loud. Uh, I can imagine... Like, I don't do it around other people so much. Uh, it is mostly just, like, if I'm in an aisle by myself. Like, the other day, I was looking at some art supplies, and I was definitely saying, well, Jeremy, you're going to need this and stuff. I have these conversations with myself, and I think that's new because I, I've always done it, but I think it's a lot more now because of this show. I need a co-host, somebody to, somebody else to talk. I need to train my dogs to talk then. My dogs are my co-hosts. When I say Jeremy here, I really mean Jeremy and his dogs are here. Sometimes the cat. You guys haven't seen the cat yet. I'm going to have to bring the cat in sometime. Um, usually when I'm drawing, I close the door. Uh, just for peace and quiet and stuff, but also because I don't want the cat walking with my picture. My cat does not respect boundaries. Hey, Chester, how's it going? I'm talking about my cat and I just heard my cat meow. My cat knows I'm talking about it. Hey, we're, um, I don't know if you know Lorraine or not, but uh, we're working on Lorraine's dog. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of the dog. She may have mentioned it at some time, um, but I'm not very good with names. I was hoping she'd be in here tonight to kind of let us know what the name of the dog is. But um, I haven't seen her, so I'm, I'm just calling it Beautiful Tennis Ball Dog. Kind of has this lion mane, which is cool. Like, I feel like I could be drawing a lion right now. Let's 
think this eye line is supposed to be as wide as that. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit and close the gap on some of these things. Interesting all the little defects that you fix over time. Is this your first time, first time in here, Chester? I don't remember. But anyway, welcome. Appreciate you uh, stopping by. If this is your first time here, um, this is to anybody watching. Um, I appreciate if you guys subscribe so that um, you guys know when I'm doing these. I usually do them every uh, every Tuesday and Friday these days, but sometimes I switch it up. Uh, but mostly Tuesdays and Fridays. And uh, it's just basically this. Sometimes I'm drawing a picture for somebody in, uh, in particular because they asked me to. Um, a lot of times I'm just drawing random stuff to get better at drawing, which is the ultimate goal. Um, if this is really your first time and you haven't been around to hear this feel, uh, basically, uh, I started this um, back in January as a New Year's resolution. And the New Year's resolution was basically just, you know, I feel like I'm not being as creative as I used to be and I want to devote some time to it. And um, and that was it. I, I just thought, well, hey, I'll, I'll draw every now and then. And... Um, you know, increase my skill set and all that stuff. And uh, I, I originally intended to just do it once a week, draw a picture once a week. And that was the sum total of my goal. Um, and uh, yeah, now I'm basically drawing pictures at least every other day, if not every day. Um, and uh, it's been that way since January. And uh, the reason I did a live stream is because I mean, it, it, it's a lot more fun to talk to people while I'm doing it, but also, like, I feel like you guys hold me accountable. So I look at it as like, well, if I if I schedule a live stream and I say I'm going to be doing it every Tuesday and um, Friday, then that kind of holds me accountable. Like, if I'm not in my chair doing a picture, um you know, like Tuesdays and Fridays and stuff, somebody's going to notice, right? So that, that makes me, it's almost like, you know, you have a job and um, your boss expects you to be at work or something. So like, you know, you make every effort you can to be at work um, versus maybe during the pandemic where people were sent home and people worked from home. Well, you know, there's not as many eyes on you. So you might get up at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's kind of like that. I, I feel like, inviting other people to participate holds you accountable so that's what it started off as now it's just like well i'm having fun drawing but i do try to do pictures that do increase my skill set like I, I try to pick pictures to draw that you know i try to pick pick fun pictures pictures of pretty things um adorable cute things and stuff but each time i do a picture i try to like get better at drawing Like here, I'm, I'm really enjoying this technique where I um, I sand the paper. I've done a couple of pictures like this, but it's always nice to uh, practice and um, continue doing things like that. So, hey, Lorraine's here. Yay, Oslo. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was wondering what the name of the dog was, and I, I've been saying throughout this entire thing, um, I have no idea what this dog's name is. Oslo. That's great. I appreciate you coming in here because I had no idea. So this is uh, Lorraine's dog, Oslo. There you go. Now I can say that. And uh, hopefully you like how it's turning out. It, You know, I'm taking my time with it. And, um, you know, it, it's not going to be done tonight. Like, we're already an hour and 50 minutes into this. And I'll keep it going a little bit longer. But, you know, it is Tuesday night. I like to let people hop off so they can go to work tomorrow or whatever. But... I'll continue working on it. I just wanted to make sure, mostly get his face in there and, you know, had to get the tennis ball in there. But, yeah, that's cool, man. Also, also is a great dog, a name for this dog. That's cool. Beautiful dog, by the way. I, I love, I love how he looks, he looks like he's relaxing. I, I don't know. It's all, yeah, he. Okay. 
I, I wasn't sure if it was a he or she too. Um, so Oslo looks super relaxed, but also he looks he looks like he just won a great victory against that tennis ball. Like it's not like he. I don't know. It just looks like he he um he captured that tennis ball. Like that tennis ball was being tossed or something like that. It was in motion and he snatched it out of midair. That's the story I'm giving to this. So he is he's a hunter of tennis balls. Thanks, Lorraine. I appreciate that. Like um you know, I was telling people, like, you know, if I'm just drawing some random dog that I found on the internet, I, you know, if it turns out great, that that's fine. But uh, when it's somebody's actual pet, I want to do it justice. Um, you know, it's important to me that uh, it looks like it, it has, like, um, the likeness. I, I think it's the term, sorry. The likeness of their dog. So to hear, to hear you say that brings me joy. I appreciate it. This is also the benefit of doing a live stream. Sometimes the uh, the person that you're doing the drawing for comes in and you get to chat with them in real time. That's kind of cool. Like I, honestly, I don't know why more artists don't do that kind of stuff. Like, you know, if they're drawing a picture for for somebody, you don't really want to wait until later to find out if they like it. You want to kind of find out in real time. That's kind of cool. Computer talking to me. I love this dog. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, everybody loves your couch. Like I showed the um, I showed the reference photo at the beginning, and uh, and I agree with them. That's a beautiful couch. Like I would love to have that couch. That's the kind of couch you want, like in your study, like when you're pouring over treasure maps. You come, you come in. You got like. I don't know. Like all your treasure maps and all of your research material all laid out. Like, um, I feel like there should be a globe over in the corner, like one of those old antique globes as well. Oh, uh -oh. how old is uh, your your puppy? I'm gonna call him a puppy because he looks like a puppy. It doesn't, it doesn't look too old here. Like you can, you can definitely st tell that he's still got his spirit in him. Like some old dogs, they get just like worn out and they're happy to sit by the fire and just reminisce about old days. <clears throat> this, this dog looks full of life. Oslo, that's a cool name. All my dogs have like weird names like Guinness. And Bear. Bear is such a generic thing. I don't know why Bear ended up so generic of a name. Like, I've had pets before. Like, as a computer programmer, I usually give them like techie names. Like, I had a cat named SQL, and it was spelled SQL, like the database stuff. I, um, we had a cat named Xanax because when we first got the cat, it, it was like so mellow. So we called it Xanax. But the thing is, <laughs> that was how it was as a kitten. It did not turn out to be that way as an adult. That cat was running everywhere. Over 13? Well, he doesn't show it. He still looks like a, still looks like a young pup. Beautiful dog, though. Yeah. So, I mean, so you guys don't see it because I only showed it at the beginning, but the reference photo really looks like this cool little study that you would pour over maps. Oh, I see what you're doing, Richard. You think I'm doing a treasure hunt, and every time I say treasure, that's a hint. I, I get it. I know what you're doing there, Richard. I'm not doing a treasure hunt. I don't have anything to hide. If I had if I had loot to hide, I would totally be doing a treasure hunt. That's in the future. I'm not doing a treasure hunt right now. 
Yeah. I think he's cute. It, it's a lot of fun to draw. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, but like if, if somebody's just showing up now, um, I did Lorraine's Cats as well the other day. Now I did Lorraine's Cats in color pencil. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put a little bit more effort into this one um, with the pastels. I, I think that just when I was looking at the reference picture, I'm like, man, that looks like a painting. So like I, I'm trying to create something a little bit more painterly, I guess. But um, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's not done yet. I, I think it's off to a good start. Pretty happy with it so far. I really do like working with pastel. And uh, I like this. Um, I like this method of toning your paper. Because pastel on black is really super cool. You know, you get that contrast of color and stuff. And if you don't have black paper because it's expensive paper to get past on that, make your own. That's my philosophy. I really think that like artists are kind of just like mad scientists. They like to, um, you know, try different ways of uh, solving problems. So like in this case, uh, you have pastel. It's kind of like this chalky substance. How do you make it adhere to the paper? Well, Mad Scientist says, let's add sand to the paper so they have something to grip onto. And that's why you end up with this kind of surface. Yeah, an animal named Adderall, that's awesome. Yeah, Xanax was not a Xanax kind of cat. Like, when, um, you know, Xanax is given for anxiety, uh, for those of you guys who don't know. Um, but uh, this cat seemed super mellow and chill so we were like uh you know, let's just call it call her xanax that sounds fun um you know it was kind of as a joke um but as the cat got older the cat was very high strung you know like the cat exhibited more of uh the kind of traits that you would uh you would prescribe xanax for i, I would think i don't know i i don't know anything about xanax but um yeah, the cat was not mellow. Like, the cat was always running around doing things. It was a fun cat. Um, I always liked Xanax. Xanax was one of my favorites. So I've had a ton of cats over the years. Um, and uh, we, we're down to one cat now. And uh, I'll probably get another cat at some point in the future. I just haven't. Like, I've got too many dogs at the moment. But um, Xanax was one of the fun ones. Uh, my favorite cat that I had. Uh, his name was Ghost. And that cat was awesome. Super mellow. Um, he would actually go for car rides and enjoy car rides. Like, I would take him out, set him, like, in the center, a console or whatever that's called, between the two chairs in the front. And he would just sit there and chill. Um, he would go, he would, like, I, I never saw him get into a fight. He was just always he was just always happy to just be chilling, you know, kind of like a, a Buddhist cat. That was my impression of Ghost. Ghost was the best. Um, the one cat that we've got now, his name is Archer from the uh, not Archer is in like he has a bow and arrow or anything. But if you guys are familiar with the uh, that Comedy Central, I think show. Uh, named Archer, the cartoon. Uh, he was named after that. That's a funny show, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. I highly recommend it. Probably not for kids, um, but it, it's funny. It's about uh, a guy who's kind of like um, like a spy, like James Bond or whatever. Oh, you can hear that sound, the scraping sound? Yeah, I love that sound. Like I've got the I've got the background noise kind of tuned out, but like if I didn't have that filter on this, that's 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 like ASMR fodder there. Like that sounds so cool. I love that sound. 
I'm glad that you guys can hear that because it, it is actually kind of cool. And uh, again, it's just that clear gesso. Um, I think, don't quote me on this, but it's what I read. Um, clear gesso. Like I, I saw a video on how you can make your own clear gesso and I don't recommend it because I don't think it's archival quality. Like I think it'll kind of wear down over time, but basically they uh, buy marble dust and uh, the marble dust is like cheap. It's like $4 a bag or something like that. And they use like clear glue or something as a binder and they just kind of mix marble dust into it. And that's how they make their own, you know, homemade clear gesso. But I think that's kind of how actual clear gesso is made, where it is marble dust and uh, some sort of binder like glue. I don't know. It's archival quality, so that's that's definitely definitely buy it instead of make your own, unless you just don't care and you're just practicing or whatever. But um, anyway, it's got some sort of sand in it. I think it is marble, and uh, it's kind of cool. It's like drawing on sandpaper. I have tried drawing on sandpaper and it's also cool, but you know, this finer sand's not gonna wear down your pastel pencils as much. And by the way, you could use regular uh, square pastels as well if, if you wanted to, which I sometimes do. It's just, I've got, I've got these pastel pencils, so I might as well use them. Especially when doing fur, it's uh, creates like a more fur-like picture. Like really, and I've explained this before, you know, this, this here, you can still get like a fine line on it if, if you wanted to, but, um, you know, I have these pastel pencils, so I might as well use them. Just kind of cover up that little bit there, I just did. Yeah, so, uh, white gesso, um. You can mix with their acrylic paints, but I don't. But I saw somebody do a side by side comparison, and the white gesso mixed with acrylic paints doesn't have the same kind of texture that the clear gesso is going to have. So that that's the only thing that I would add to that. Um, something about the clear gesso. Um, uh, they so there's a, like a lot of different things that you can actually buy that kind of does the same thing. So there's like there's um. Uh, I forget the name of it, but I think it's called Pastel Ground. They sell it at uh, they sell it at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if it's at Michael's. It's kind of like a special thing, or like just some regular art store. But anyway, it's the same kind of stuff. It, it's like ground that you can mix with other stuff um, to kind of give you that sand. Um, and then there was like one or two other products, but anyway, there's videos on uh, YouTube that you can watch. Uh, they kind of do these comparisons. And one of the things they did try was like regular uh, gesso, like the normal acrylic gesso that people use to uh, prime um, canvases. And um, it, it doesn't create the same kind of like um, surface that the clear gesso will. So that's the only thing I would say. Plus the clear gesso um, kind of gives you an additional, oops, sorry, making a mess here. The uh, clear gesso also gives you the benefit of being able to uh, you know, apply whatever tone you want. You don't have to worry about it mixing with the uh, white um, and kind of getting washed out. So like if you wanted to do red, you get red instead of pink, that sort of thing. So that's another benefit. But I don't know, like I haven't actually tried the white um, uh, gesso, maybe it works just as fine. And they also have like um uh like black gesso as well but i don't know clear gesso works for me i don't see any reason to uh i i i wouldn't picture any of these things working better than this like this is really super nice but i think it's probably enough like um i should say that like probably any kind of um uh this, you know, texture like that is probably going to be better than not, right? Like if you just didn't do anything. Um, because like I said, I, 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 I have used pastel on virtually everything just for fun. And um, I can use pastel on um, 
you know, construction paper, which I, which I've done. And if you've ever tried to draw on construction paper, that has no tooth, like it's super smooth and it works. But you know, when you come in here and you do this blending bit, so much of it just kind of lifts off the paper because there's nothing to hold to it. Um, so that's no good. So you can compensate for that by like just not blending or blending very lightly, um, something like that. But you know, if you use the fixative, the workable fixative that has the tooth, or you use, um, you know, the clear gesso, it's a, uh, it's just a different experience. Like you don't have to do so much work to compensate for the the lack of tooth. Like honestly, like I use it on watercolor paper, but I could use uh, construction paper, apply that clear gesso to it, and I'd be good to go. This this uh this is just a piece of like. I don't know, like chipboard or something like that that I put over my desk um, so that I don't ruin my desk with like paint or whatever. Um, this chipboard, super smooth. Like if I tried to draw on it just for fun, you know, there's not like it comes right off. But if I applied that clear gesso to this chipboard, I could draw on this chipboard. Um, I thought it would be fun to go off and um, get, uh, what is it called? Like drywall. Like, I, th I thought it would be kind of cool to go off and buy a piece of dry a, a drywall, texture that surface, and try to do a pastel pinch, uh, uh, like a pastel picture on a big, uh, what is it, four by eight? Big four by eight piece of uh, drywall. Like, I don't know if that's archival quality. Like, say it, it was a really cool picture or whatever. I don't know if it would stand the test of time, but I feel like that, that prepping of the surface would work there. These are the crazy mad scientist things that I think of, like when I try to like push the envelope of like what all you can do with these different mediums, which I don't do all that often. You know, I, I find something that I'm happy with and I kind of stick with it for a while, but I do like to experiment, you know, like I am, you know, not in terms of age, but in, in terms of uh, where I'm at, like I am a young artist um, who is just getting my feet wet and this kind of stuff like before before I started on this journey this year of like practicing creativity every day, uh, basically I drew a picture once a year or something like that. So this is new for me. All of this is new for me. So in this phase of my journey, I am, I am probably more creative than I would be if I'd been doing this for years or something kind of stuck in my ways, you know, I want to, I want to see what works and what doesn't have some fun with it. Cause it is fun, you know, um, I was looking for tone paper, didn't want to go off and buy a set of tone paper. I was looking at the back of, uh, one of my notebooks and it was like this, this kind of gray, um, board in the back, you know, like the hard part that kind of, so, to, so that your notebook's not so floppy. I was looking at that. And I'm like, well, that's gray. That's the kind of paper I want. So I ended up drawing a charcoal picture on the back cardboard piece in the back of a, like a sketchbook. Um. And it was fun. I mean, um, I wanted to try doing charcoal on tan paper. So uh, the only thing I had was, I, oh, I was uh, thinking about like, um, like grocery bags. And I'm like, well, I don't have any grocery bags, but I do have these lunch bags. Let me try that. Uh, so I drew a charcoal picture on the lunch bag and that was fun. You know, it's weird. It's not what most people do, but I, I, I tell you, it brought me a lot of joy to be able to draw Gandalf on a uh, lunch bag. That was so much fun. Now, I don't recommend it because, it, it, I mean, lunch bags have no tooth. But I could have I could have done something with that. I could have prepped it. Like, honestly, all the stuff I'm talking about for pastel would probably work for charcoal as well. I, I do usually use a smoother paper with my charcoal. I'm not as worried about texture as I am when I'm working with pastels. Yeah, well, actually, they so they they do have some drywall that's supposed to be mold resistant. Like they use them in like bathrooms and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's a crazy idea, but if I tried it, I would probably go and buy that instead. But again, I I don't I don't think that that would hold up over time. So like, what's the point? Just go off and get a canvas and <laughs> oh, and you can uh, so. Uh, another fun fact, so like I'm probably actually going to try this in the future, uh, working with charcoal on canvas, uh, but you can use charcoal on canvas and you can even use pastel on canvas. And, um, you know, like a lot of people use um, pastel on like a cloth-like substance. I, I think it's called velour. Um, 
but yeah so like i i really want to try different surfaces just for fun just to see how it goes um i don't really have any high expectations for it it's just you know like i don't know whenever whenever you see me draw like a portrait or a uh, horse or something like that um because these are things i'm more familiar with doing um it's usually an experiment like i'm usually doing it just to test something or try something um like some of those portraits i do you know they they don't always turn out that great but uh those don't usually take that long to do so i'll do one of those if i just want to test a new piece of paper or something like that same thing with horses i haven't done a horse in a while i need to do one but i'm, pre I'm pretty pretty familiar with drawing horses so if you see me draw a horse, it's probably because I'm trying to test some new technique. Because I feel like uh, I'm not going to screw up the horse. So like, well, I'll probably, I, I could screw up a horse. Like a lot of times I draw the horse with like a stubby nose or something like that, which, you know, I need to get better at. Like for some reason, that's just something I do. But you, you can kind of see the technique here. All I do is I apply, I apply some color. Well, start with the paper, tone the paper, apply the gesso. Then in the actual drawing part, I apply some color and then I blend it out so that it's nice and super soft, right? So like this is all blurry through here. Like it's hard to see on camera, but here in person, this is all super blurry. Then I'll come back in, maybe one or two colors. Usually it's just one color, um, but I'll come in. And I'll come over that and whereas I was blending all of this out, this new stuff where I'm just putting in some fur or whatever, I won't blend that, right? So that gives me my texture and in some cases my highlights. Um, so I'll, I'll highlight parts of the fur, leave this as kind of like a mid-tone and then have some of that dark area show through and, you know, some of the more darker areas. Now in this case, we've got some highlights up here on his forearm right and so i'll add that add some texture to the fur and then that kind of comes down into like some wider area so i'll come in and add that and then there's some other areas down here that's kind of a little bit more brown so i'll add some brown down here and that's basically it and i'll go over it until i'm happy with it like in this case that looks too brown so i'll add some more but pastels are really great because you can just kind of blend them right on the paper, you know. And blending them on the paper creates that illusion of depth and, you know, all those great things. It's a lot of fun. If you paint in, they will come. That's why I want to paint Huli's uh, house. I'm going to paint this awesome mural on Huli's house. She just doesn't know it yet. In case you were wondering, uh, Huli and I are friends, like we talk all the time, so I feel like I can make jokes about painting her house without offending her. Yeah, Huli's good people. So, and I love this kind of blank because this is all basically white. So again, same process. So I'll come in, just kind of scribble in. And when I'm scribbling, I'm still trying to like, I'm still cognizant of the fact that it's fur. So I kind of try to follow, you know, the contours of the body, which in this case is just kind of all meshed up together because he's got, he's got his uh, arm, like you can bear, well, yeah, actually you can see it. He's got his arms crossed. So like all of his, his uh, chest fur is kind of like mashed together. So anyway, I'll just kind of scribble that stuff in. I don't care too much about detail. If it was colored pencil, I would be way more concerned about the direction of the fur because it's really hard to blend out the pencil marks there. Oh, <laughs> who was paying attention? Sorry. I was making a deck because I thought she left. Um, anyway. If it was colored pencil, 
Um, sorry, allergies. It's like really bothering me. Um, so if it was colored pencil, I'd be more careful with these like marks, right? Because it's like, even, even if you blend it with like some solvent or something, it's really hard to get rid of the initial mark. You'll probably still see some pencil marks in there. But with pastel, I don't care. Like, look, I'll, I'll draw a line this way, right? And then I'll come in with my blending stump and all of this becomes this little soft base color without too much effort, right? So like this and colored pencils. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoy colored pencils too. They're they're fun as well. Um, I like the waxiness of them. But anyway, um, this is a lot more difficult in colored pencils to uh, to uh, actually achieve. Like you basically need a solvent. You need to uh, come back and probably do it a couple of times to get it to work right. And it still isn't going to blend as quickly or as easily. Now the trade-off is when it's all done, you need fixant to kind of like stick all of this into the picture so that it doesn't smudge. But anyway, so you see how that all blended in really nice. Now it's got this like soft kind of like out of focus look to it. And then I'll come back with my lighter color and go over that. And this time I am paying more attention and taking greater care in my marks, but I don't have to make as many of them, you know. And and I may do this a couple of times, just or, or like certain areas of it and stuff like that, so that it kind of becomes these layers, essentially. These beautiful dog. So uh, okay, from Tennessee, rescue dog, awesome. I don't think I would buy a bred puppy. Like I don't I don't think there's anything like I don't know, like a puppy mill would suck, but I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with like dogs that are bred to be sold. But personally I, I would just go get a rescue dog. Plus I don't care if a dog's purebred. Like none of my dogs are purebred. They're all mutts. So anyway, in these higher layers, of course, you're um you, you do need to care about like which direction the fur is going and stuff like that. You want it to look natural. But even then, if you make a mistake or whatever, you can just blend it out and start over. And each layer that you add just adds more pigment to the page. And the most realistic pastel pictures, you know, all it is is just like 500 layers of pastel where that's where all that time comes in, you know. Now, you see how like there's this, I call it a halo effect, um, where the black is showing through because I did like one shape here and I'm doing another shape. It's important in this process when you get into these other layers, kind of like go over just to, just to kind of like close that gap so that it doesn't look like, I don't know. But then in some cases, like this is below his, his um, jowls. Um, so it's natural to have like some shadow through here. It's not this dark in the reference picture, so I might adjust that, but also it doesn't look bad being this dark because, you know, as an artist, you get to add some style. I like contrast, so I might leave that in there. I don't know. Like, I'm saying this, like, Lorraine's not here. Like, I'm in charge of this picture. Like, no, Lorraine's in charge of this picture. <laughs> That's funny. Like, I do what I want. No, no, Jeremy, you, you're doing this for somebody. They did, they get a say. <laughs> but also, I, I don't think that um, pictures uh, don't treasure any. Mean, I'm not currently treasure hunting. I'm not involved in any treasure hunt at the moment. I do like puzzles though, like mysteries and stuff like that when they pop up. I, I'm interested in those. Um, oh, what was I saying? Yeah, so like, I do feel like people um, or artists are entitled to make some changes for the art uh, that aren't reflected in the uh, reference picture, just to add style, so on change colors up if it makes sense. 
like if a person um like if you're doing a like reference photos are only references that's all they're for they're not supposed to be copied exactly right so like if you're doing a portrait of somebody and they have no sense of style um and they're uh they're wearing like i don't know like what's what's two colors that might clash um anyway they're they're wearing clashing colors or something you can change the colors like you can change the colors so that uh the picture has like some nice warm colors or some cool colors and those are working together and stuff you you get to do all that some words what's the coolest thing you found in a treasure hunt i have never found anything <laughs> a quarter i found a quarter with the metal detector once uh, most of the people in here, Lozello, uh, are um, from a uh, forum that's uh, about the Forest Fen treasure hunt. Uh, w which case it was a um, it was a million dollars in gold that was hidden in the Rocky Mountains, and uh, it lasted for like ten years. And people were uh, searching for that. I can't think of anything cooler than that to find. Uh, but as far as I know, uh, none of the people here found it. So we're all in the same boat of like nothing. We didn't find anything. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's a it's a cool little treasure hunt community. Like it's almost like um, like if you've ever been or heard of those uh breakout rooms where you solve puzzles, and uh to break out of the room or something, that's what the community's like. They like puzzle solving things like that. So, I'm pre I'm pretty active in that community. So like a lot of the people came over from that. So that that's why we're always talking about treasure hunting in this. But I think most of the people in here are like, oh, yeah, actually, uh, I can talk about that. So, like, just recently, this year, um, in my home state, like Kentucky, um, somebody found 700 gold coins from the Civil War era. Uh, it's called the Great Kentucky Horde. That was this year. Somebody found that in a farm field. I don't know if they were using a metal detector or not. There wasn't a lot of details on it. But 700 gold coins, it was worth over $2 million dollars found it in, in a Kentucky cornfield. That's amazing. So I didn't find it, but if you're asking like, what's a cool treasure to find, that would be a cool treasure to find. And then there's other stories of other things being hidden around. Like um, there's supposed to be like some Confederate civil bars that are like around here. Um, lost in like some river. I don't know. There's all these legendary treasure hunts. Um, like uh, the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. Uh, you know, all the all the stuff you see on one of those like Unsolved Mysteries or William Shatner's Unexplained uh, show. Oak Island. That kind of stuff. It, it's pretty cool. I have never found anything. I found like lint in my pocket. That's about it. I would love to find anything at all but um there was a the I, I mentioned the secret earlier which is what i would try to duplicate if i created a treasure hunt with art um this guy made a book it was a children's book uh mostly but he uh he put a bunch of paintings in there there were 12 of them he hid 12 different like um these cool little vases that were like uh sculpted um those were uh, hidden in various uh, cities, like or around America. There was twelve of them, um, and that was in, during the nineteen eighties. And then they got lost, and like nobody, nobody knew whatever happened to them. And it kind of like fell out of the public consciousness until the internet came along, and then people were um, kind of became more interested in trying to figure out whatever happened to those, and then. One of them was found in the 1980s, but the other ones were kind of, I think I'll only one, um, but the other ones were kind of just lost to history, right? So like they were in towns like, um, well, like New York and San Francisco, things like that. So, you know, like since the 1980s, there's been like a lot of construction. They're like buried in the ground. So people thought maybe construction people dug them up or something, didn't know what they were. But if you found one, you're supposed to get like a, a gemstone that's worth like two thousand dollars. So like that that's why it captured people's interest. But mostly people are interested in it just because I don't know, it's like a fun little mystery to solve. 
but the Forrest Finn one was a big one. That that one that one just recently ended back in twenty twenty, and um, you know it kind of ended in mysterious ways. Nobody really knows um, for certain uh, where the thing was, what the solution was, or anything like that. The guy who started it, he passed away. And um, a lot of mystery surrounding it, so that's why it captures people's attention. People are people are fascinated by the unknown and mysteries and trying to solve them, you know, like aliens and Bigfoot and things like that. I don't know. Everybody's got to have a hobby. Oh, the Archer TV show, yeah, that that is definitely hilarious. I love that show. I think somebody's catching up with us. When you reach this comment in the future, yeah, that, that is a hilarious show. For those who haven't watched Archer, it's like some of the humor is a little crude, like it, it's really for adults, um, but it's not like, you know, like adult, adult kind of uh, stuff. It's just, it's a little bit crude. Um, but if that's your thing, like if you're okay with that, then. It's definitely uh, worth watching. Like, I always have to give out these disclaimers because, you know, different people are different ways and stuff, and I don't want to offend anybody. Um, I remember when Game of Thrones was really popular. I love that. that sh I'm a nerd, so I, I love that uh, show. Um, but then, like, I was talking with coworkers, and, and, like, I worked at a horse organization, so most of my coworkers were actually women. And... Um, they were like, so uh, what'd you do? I'm like, well, I'm catching up on Game of Thrones. And it's like, is Game of Thrones any good? I, 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 I'm, my natural inclination is to say, yeah, it's a, it's a great show. It's based on books and stuff. But there's some stuff in there that's not for everybody. So I'm like, uh, yeah, it's, well, it's not for everybody. <laughs> you know, you have to throw out that disclaimer. So the dog has got some white, but also like there's a little bit of tinge of brown in here. So I'm trying to get that in there. It doesn't really show up on camera, but that's what I'm doing now. But anyway, uh, Archer is pretty mild. It's just, you know, some, some crassy bits. This is a beautiful dog. I like it. All right, so how are we doing on time? Oh, we're like two hours and 30 minutes in this. I should probably wrap this up now that I think about it. <laughs> like, I lost track of time here, guys. All right, so I am going to wrap this up soon, um, and then I'll uh, I'll probably finish it up tomorrow and post, like, a part two or something like that. Like, I got to remember it's not Friday night. People have to go to work tomorrow and stuff like that. I don't want to be the cause for them showing up like half half asleep. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I hope your uh, week is going well and that it's, um, you know, going to be a great week for you guys. I think I'll have to probably finish up. Like, pictures like this that I'm really into... I, I can't really wait and put it off until like something like Friday or something. So I'll probably finish this up over the next couple of days and we'll probably draw something else on Friday. Like it's mean. It's almost like a, a little lion. All right. So if you guys don't mind, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Um, go ahead and give you guys a break. Put my dog out and stuff like that. Maybe I'll... And I don't want to commit to it. Like, I was thinking maybe I'll go live and finish it up tomorrow, but I think I'll just finish it up and record it and post it and stuff. But I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this looks cool. So I'll go ahead and, before I go, I'll show you the reference picture. So as you can see, it's getting there. It's not quite there yet, but it's, 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 uh, it's starting to get there. Um, yeah, it looks like a little lion. Um, so I like it. But anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. You guys are always great sport. You know, again, I, I have no reason to expect it. Well, don't tap dancing on the floor. I had no reason to expect this, like, fun conversations while I'm drawing pictures and stuff like that. But you guys bring that here. 
And uh, I do appreciate you guys for doing that. So anyway, appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Tuesday. Um, I'll, uh, I'll probably be back Friday. Uh, I'll probably have to finish up before Friday, so we'll be drawing something else. Hey, you know what? Like, if you guys want to see something in particular being drawn on Friday, feel free to, you know, drop a comment below um, and uh, make some recommendations. Obviously, if uh, somebody's not subscribed, it, I would appreciate uh, the subscribe, um, give it a like, whatever. Um, but short of that, I'll see you guys on Friday. If you guys don't have any suggestions, I'll come up with something. It'll be fun. All right. In the meantime... You guys have a great uh, one. Hey, Tyler came in the room. Hey, Tyler. Uh, sorry you come, came in at the end. We're wrapping up now, but um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a DM or something and say hi. Um, but anyway, guys, I appreciate it. Bear wants to go out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.